One of the most intimidating things about character drawing to me has always been the bodies. They just seemed big and complex and felt a bit out of reach for the longest time. As a kid, I remember drawing people with limbs that just looked like rectangles with circles for heads and giant paws for hands, and I thought this was accurate. But at one point, I decided I wanted to learn how to draw characters more seriously. I was still a kid at this time, to be fair, but I tried to uplevel my understanding of how to draw bodies first by adding more definition to the different parts. I want to make it clear that at the time, the internet was definitely a thing. Though not as much as it is today, and I didn't use sites like Tumblr or Pinterest, so I got most of my drawing advice from physical books. Although the bodies I was trying to draw at this point were closer to a cartoon than realism, it was a step up from what I used to do before. Then I got my first how to draw a book that was focused on drawing in a manga style. I used this book to study anatomy a little bit, but this is where it started to become a bit overwhelming for me. From what I remember, this book did break down the body into simpler shapes, but not in a way that was useful to me as someone who was just starting to learn how to draw in general. I think it was better suited to people who had actually had somewhat of a grasp on drawing already. But looking back at it now, I also think that one of the downfalls of my early drawing days was my use of books and picture tutorials over video ones. Especially because I was new to drawing, actually seeing the movements and motions people made with their pencils would have benefited me much more. But that didn't stop me from still making improvements. If you've seen my relearning anatomy videos, you might already know that I was not someone who used guidelines in my drawings, mostly because I didn't really understand how to use them properly, but I did try my best to observe general shapes of the body and then mimic them in my own drawings. This led to drawings that looked like bodies, though were fairly underdeveloped. Once I started to become a bit more comfortable with drawing bodies, I experimented a little bit with poses, but I only went as far most of the time as changing the position of the arms because I fully lacked an understanding of how the body looked in different poses. And I did have a phase where I used references here and there, but again, I felt like I didn't really know what I was doing. This is when I wish I would have branched out toward video tutorials online, because I think I could have developed an understanding much better if I had pursued it more actively. The drawing books I had did include a few poses, but in general, I was just copying and trying to memorize what I saw rather than developing an actual understanding and an ability to visualize different poses. But the thing is, I also had a deep fear of messing up. This might sound silly to anyone who hasn't experienced this, but I used to feel as though actually going out of my way to study bodies and poses as an artist meant also giving myself an opportunity to fail or to be bad at it. So instead, I opted to have this half-baked understanding of anatomy that was justifiable with the excuse that I was never really trying that hard. And here's where my perfectionism and results-driven behavior was really starting to ruin my relationship with art. If you're an artist, you probably do it because you love the process of it to at least some degree. But for me, although I did love the process, that love was overridden by a desire to achieve good results and to be seen as being particularly good at art. I think the funny part about this is the fact that it held me back and made me much worse at drawing than I could have been if I wasn't concerned with performing the part of a talented artist and actually focused more on just doing what I liked and challenging myself regularly. But I looked at anatomy and complex poses with the understanding that they were for more advanced artists than me and it would only be worth pursuing when I was truly good enough at drawing to get good results from studying these things. So I put it off as a someday thing which never saw the light of day because there was no way to be good enough for it without actually practicing it. And at one point, I became very aware and self-conscious of the fact that my character drawings were extremely boring and stiff, and I let a sense of shame take drawing away from me as an enjoyable pastime. It simply became something I felt like I was no good at and I wouldn't benefit from doing it any longer. The art hiatus that I went on, with only a few short-lived breaks, lasted about six years. If I'm being honest here, there were plenty of times where I felt guilty about this. Like if I hadn't stopped making art, then I would be so much better at it by now. But I think that maybe this break was well needed. Because if my relationship with art and creating stayed the same, six more years of experience would have hardly mattered. I probably would have seen some improvements, but I think I would have been more likely to continue avoiding putting in a full effort because I was too concerned about failing to actually enjoy making that art. But about halfway through 2023, I had a bit of a breakthrough. I won't go super into detail because I think I've talked about this on my channel at least a couple of times already. 
But basically, I started painting again on a whim and started to remember why I liked making art in the first place, and this led me to wanting to pursue character drawing once more, as that was a huge part of why I liked to draw as a teenager and what ultimately got me more invested in art. And at first, I just thought I would try to learn again by following tutorials that came up on Pinterest or maybe I'd take a Skillshare course. For whatever reason, it didn't occur to me to use YouTube as a resource because I didn't really engage much with the art community on this platform. But I think because I started searching about art more on other platforms, the YouTube algorithm started to present me with more art-focused content, and I realized that there wasn't a better place to get so much free information. And that's when I had the idea to actually film this process, which honestly started out as a joke to myself, but then turned into something I was actually doing. So naturally, I started this series with anatomy, since it felt like the first step to drawing characters as well as the thing that I had the least experience with. I made two episodes about this, one that was a bit of a bare bones just starting to learn the basic shapes and proportions, and one that was focused on poses and movement. Now I don't think I really did the best job at explaining my intentions in these videos. After all, I had absolutely no experience with content creating, and quite honestly, I'm still learning about it. But I do think I made it pretty clear that I was just trying to start learning how to draw bodies, and not master anatomy or tell other people how to draw them. And I got plenty of good advice from other artists about where to go next, which was so helpful and probably not something I would have come across so easily if I didn't share my process with others. However, there was also one or two comments that were trying to tell me I was learning the wrong way and I'll get into my thoughts on that in a minute. When I made these videos, I considered the improvements I made to be successful, simply because I had seen improvement and not because I felt that I had mastered anatomy. In the first video, I managed to break down drawing bodies into a simpler process than I felt like it was for so long. And in the second, even though I struggled with it a bit more, I eventually came to realize that I could in fact make progress by challenging myself with poses that seemed intimidating, even if my attempts weren't very good at first. And even though now, I can look back on those drawings just a couple months later and feel like they don't compare to the progress I've made more recently, I still know that they were absolutely essential in order for me to get to the stage that I'm at right now. That's not to say that I'm great at anatomy now either, but I 100% feel like I am so much better at it than I used to be. And more importantly, it doesn't feel nearly as intimidating. And that is simply because I gave myself a process to focus on, rather than a perfect end goal result. I demystified anatomy for myself by getting more lost in the details than the product, which gave me so much more motivation to continue moving forward with it. So to address what I mentioned earlier about learning the wrong way, let me tell you something I was taught a while back. In middle school, I had a teacher who used to tell us that perfect practice makes perfect. As a correction to the saying, practice makes perfect. Now I know he had good intentions with this, and I don't blame him or what he said for my own perfectionism at all. But I would say that this resonated with me as someone who was a perfectionist, and I believe that there was a right way and a wrong way to learn just about everything. The truth of the matter is that, while much of the time, especially with drawing, there are more efficient ways to learn something, there is no wrong way. In fact, the only wrong way is to not learn at all, or to limit yourself from trying. In my experience, giving yourself a solid base to start with means that you can always add on more complexities as you go, which is easier than unlearning. So it's best to start with the absolute bare minimum rather than try and tackle every aspect at once. That being said, you also shouldn't put off learning those different aspects until you're good enough at the fundamentals, especially if you're one to always shift your own goalposts. So let's talk about where I'm at with anatomy now. Admittedly, I did not continue studying anatomy as much as I should have after making those two videos. This is partially because as I moved on in that series, I was less focused on bodies and spent a good part of each day drawing whatever I was trying to learn for those episodes, and then didn't also feel like drawing more bodies on top of that. But I have since decided to take that series a bit slower, which has allowed me more time and energy to get back to studying anatomy and poses just like I've been doing for this video. The great thing about this is that I have been reaching specifically for pose references that I think are challenging, 
And when I had started drawing bodies again, I can simply just say that my first few attempts were very rough, but instead of agonizing over each of them until they were perfect, I just made note of what I got wrong and moved on to the next post. Eventually, I started to find myself getting better and more accurate more often, which served as even more motivation to keep trying. And now, even when a pose looks complicated, I know there's a simpler way to break it down so it doesn't have to feel so hard. I now find myself using somewhat of a mix of different strategies I learned from the videos I watched last year, and when I see a good tip, I incorporate it into my own methods. Once again, this isn't a perfect method, it's just the one I'm using. At this stage, I'm still trying to get the right shapes and movements down in drawing bodies. But soon, I'm going to need to branch out even further by doing muscular studies and tackling different body shapes. I will also say that lately, I've been drawing feminine bodies far more than masculine ones, in part because most of the references I come across on Pinterest are women, but I really should be making the effort to branch out more. And in this particular study I did, I actually did something a bit different, which was using a grid to make my figures more accurate. I did this because I have a tendency to draw bodies larger than my references, and I wanted to try to make them the same size. I will say this really helped with figuring out the placement and having more of an awareness of the negative space in a figure. However, because I was trying to perfect these drawings, I did find that I was much slower with it than I've been while drawing figures on paper where I have no grid. So I think I'd benefit from doing the opposite, by giving myself a time limit and just seeing how accurate I can be in a short amount of time. If you are a beginner, or at least a beginner with drawing bodies, and it feels intimidating to you like it did for me, I do have some tips to share with you. The first is to start small. The goal is just to get started with drawing bodies. So if you start with the simplest things you can do, it will feel less daunting, even if that means a few lines to start. But at the same time, don't do what I initially did, which was trying to wait until I was good enough before learning more complex parts of anatomy and poses, as though someday you're just going to magically feel ready. And similarly, start trying to incorporate more dynamic or complex poses into your art as soon as possible. Don't just reserve the harder stuff for studies because you're concerned your finished pieces will look bad if you leave your comfort zone. You can always recreate a piece later if you want to, but you'll improve your overall art if you apply what you're learning to the finished pieces you want to make, and you'll eventually find that using dynamic poses will come more naturally for you. And I say this as someone who has resisted using them for a long time. Finally, just try to take an experimental approach to your art, finished or not. If you can be a little perfectionistic like I can, it helps to take the pressure off by seeing your art as just something you are trying out and not something you need to prove or achieve. And this also makes it more fun again, which is so, so important when it comes to improving because once art is no longer fun, you won't want to make it anymore. So whatever your experience with drawing is, I hope this was helpful or at least offered some kind of insight. Again, I know I'm not as advanced as a lot of the artists on this platform, but I do think the progress I've made recently is good proof that if you can just get started, you can and will improve.